This video is brought to you by Brilliant, a great way to learn computer science and much more. Go to brilliant.org slash traversymedia and the first 200 subscribers get 20% off. Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, I want to show you the basic process of creating a Visual Studio Code extension. And we're going to use uh, something that's already in the marketplace as a reference. This is a Bootstrap 4 snippet extension by my buddy Simon, who gave me permission to use this in this tutorial. And basically what it does is you have a bunch of different shortcuts that you can use to generate a starter template. You can generate like navigation and forms and stuff like that. So just to give you a quick example, since I have it installed, I can go ahead and do exclamation B, C, D, N and enter. And it just generates a starter template, puts my cursor right in the title area. And as you can see, it includes the bootstrap CSS, the font awesome CSS, all the JavaScript dependencies. If you want it without uh, JavaScript and you just want to use bootstrap CSS, you can do exclamation B, CSS. And then we get it without the JavaScript. There's also shortcuts for like a nav bar if I want to do BS, uh, I think it's BS nav and there we go. So it makes it makes things very uh, quick when generating a starter template or a boilerplate. So what I want to do is not recreate the, the whole extension, but just give you an idea of how something like this is created. And then we'll go ahead and we'll look at Simon's um, code repository and I'll show you exactly, you know, the files that were created to um, to create this. So first thing we're going to do is go over to the VS Code documentation. And in order to create an extension, you need to generate a, um, a specific set of files. And they actually have a Yeoman generator to do that. Yeoman is a scaffolding tool and they have a generator called generator code, which you have to install globally. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say npm install dash G for global and then yo and then generator dash code and it's going to give me an error. So I'm going to stop it because I didn't do sudo. So let me just do that real quick. So we'll say sudo. That's only if you're on Mac or Linux. All right, so we'll get that installed. And then once that's installed, we can run a command called yo code. And what that's going to do is it's going to ask us a bunch of questions and then it will generate our extension. All right. So now that we have the generator installed, I'm just going to make a directory for our uh, extension and I'm just going to call it BS4 uh, BS4 snippets, I guess. And then we'll CD. Actually, I'm sorry, we're not going to CD into it. We're, we're going to run yo code from here. OK, so it's going to ask us some questions. We can do TypeScript, JavaScript. We can create language packs and color themes. What we want is a code snippet. OK, so we're going to say new code snippets and folder name or import or none for new. We're going to just click enter here. The name of the extension is going to be BS4 snippets. The identifier, same thing. Description, we'll just say simple bootstrap for snippet generator. OK, so publisher, I'm just going to use Brad. Now the language ID, if you're creating like a PHP extension, of course, you'd put PHP or JavaScript, whatever. We're going to put HTML because that's where we're actually using the snippet. OK, so what that should have done is created a folder called BS4 snippets, which with all of these different files inside of it. So this is like a skeleton for your VS Code extension. So what I'm going to do is CD into BS4 snippets and I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code in that directory so we can check out what was created. Let me just fit this to the screen here. OK, so over here we have all of our files. We have a package.json and down here you'll see uh, this contributes object with a snippets array. OK, so whatever language you want this to be used with, you want to specify here. Now, obviously, we have HTML, but we also want to um, we want to be able to use this in like, let's say, React or JavaScript inside like a template literal or something like that. So you can add different languages. So I'm going to copy that and paste this in twice and I'm going to change this to JavaScript and we'll change this to JavaScript React. OK, so these are like identifiers for certain languages, frameworks and so on. You have template engines that you may want it to be able to use, you know, 
to use with as well. Um, and then I'm going to change the version to 1.0.0. Okay, I'm going to save that. Now, when you if you're publishing this to the marketplace, you need to be um, you need to be on the versions and, and when you make changes, you need to add them to the change log. Okay, so you have a change log dot MD file and you need to keep this up to date. Okay, so I'm actually going to get rid of this and I'll keep that. But you want to put your versions. So we have 1.0.0. We'll say initial release of BS uh, BS for snippets extension. Okay, and I'll save this and every time you update it after you publish it, you want to make sure you add your next version up here, whether that's 01 or whatever, and input the changes in. Okay, you want to be on top of that. All right, so let's close that up. So that's change log. That's the package .json. You have your readme file. So obviously this will show up in your GitHub repository. We probably want to change this to actually say like what it does and all that stuff, but I'm not going to go through that. Um, now for the important part, if we go to the snippets folder, you'll see a snippets.json. This is where we actually create the snippet um, or multiple snippets. So And what I mean is, is the code that's generated from a prefix or from a shortcut, like Simon has the BCDN, the exclamation BCDN, and it creates that whole starter template. So I'm going to do something similar inside my object here. I'm going to give it a title, this particular snippet. I'll say bootstrap for starter template. All right. Um, And we're going to set this to an object and then it's going to take a prefix. Okay, so this is like this is basically the shortcut that we would use. So I'm just going to use exclamation BS4. And then the body is what it's going to create, what it's going to output. Okay, which in, in this case is going to be an array because since we have we have a, a bunch of lines of HTML, each line needs to basically be put into a string. So I'm actually going to paste in what I have here real quick. Okay, so each line is inside of a quoted string. We're using double quotes here and then obviously HTML attributes. They use quotes and we're using double quotes here as well. So we want to make sure we escape these quotes with a backslash. Okay, um, I guess you could use single quotes, but that's not very common in HTML. Um, so I would suggest just just escaping your double quotes. If you don't escape it, it's going to think that it ends here instead of here. So you want to make you want to make sure you do that correctly. And as you can see, we just have all of our basic HTML head body tags, stuff like that. We also have a link to this, the bootstrap CSS, the font awesome CSS, a custom style sheet as you most of the time you'll have a custom style sheet. And obviously you could change this if you want and you have all your JavaScript down here. Now this money sign one, um, this is where your mouse, your cursor is going to go once you generate the extension. Okay, and we labeled this title and then down here, money sign zero. We just want a space right here um, to kind of separate, uh, you know, the script from from the rest of the body. Uh, but that's all I want to generate. Okay, so we also want to give it a description. Oops, this should be quoted. All right, so we'll just say um, creates bootstrap for starter uh, templates. Okay, so we could go on and create more so I could add another title and then add another prefix and so on. And I'm going to show you um, the Simon's extension. I'm going to show you his code after, but we're just going to stick with this one snippet. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And that's really all we need to do before we can actually test it locally. But what I would like to do is add an icon, because if you look at your extensions, most of them do have icons. So to do that, we'll open up our BS4 snippets folder and I'm just going to bring in a file called icon.png, which is just a simple bootstrap logo. And then we can go to our package.json file 
and we can add in a value. Let's see, we'll just put it like right here and we'll say icon. And we'll set that to icon dot PNG. Now we're getting this green underline here, this warning, because it says an icon requires a repository with an HTTPS protocol to be specified. And we haven't specified um, a repository because we don't have one. Okay, if, if this was a, a real production extension, we would. So what I'm going to do is just for now, I'm just going to grab the one from um, the official bootstrap for extension. So if I go to package.json, so you can see as icon, I'm just going to grab this repository here. I'm not publishing this or anything, so I'm just doing it just to show you. Uh, but if I throw that in like that, then that error should go away. We can actually change this to. We'll just say something. All right, so let's save that. And now we're ready to test this thing locally. So what we have to do is take this BS4 snippets folder and we need to put it into our extensions folder. And if you don't know where that is, it's in your users folder and it's going to be hidden. Uh, it's a hidden file. So let me see. Let's go. Okay, so this is my users folder. If you're on Windows, it'll be C, you know, C drive users, uh, then whatever your username. Um, so I want to go to my dev folder and I'm going to grab the entire folder we just created. I'm actually just going to copy it and then I'm going to bring it into the dot VS code folder into extensions and paste that in. Okay, so it shouldn't sh I don't think it shows up until we restart VS code. So if we go to our extensions, don't believe it'll be here. No. So we need to just restart VS code. I'm going to close all of my windows out and let's go back in. Go to extensions and there it is. BS4 snippets version 1.00. Simple bootcamp gives a little description, gives the publisher and we have our icon. Now the readme file is just the default. We haven't changed it, but obviously you would change this, especially if you were to publish this to the marketplace. But let's try it out. Let's make sure it actually works. Remember, we have one snippet. It's BS4 or exclamation BS4. So I'm going to create a new file and save it as index.html. Replace. Okay. So from here, I'm going to do exclamation BS. And you can see it actually comes up here in uh, VS Code. It has the, the description and everything. So if we go ahead and run that, there we go. Okay. So that works. And obviously, like the official extension that I showed you, you can you can add more snippets if you want. So that's that's the basic process of creating an extension. Now, publishing it, I'm not going to go through the publishing of an extension, but I will show you where to look. So if you go to this this page here, which is doc slash extension slash yo code and you go down to the bottom, it'll have a link to learn how to publish your extension using the publishing tool. So you would install this with uh, NPM. So it's VSCE. You want to install it globally. You run VSCE publish. Now, in order for this to be published, you need to get a, a personal access token. Okay, and they actually host their extensions on um, Azure. So you need a DevOps organization. So just follow this link, create an account, get a token. Um, and then down here, Using the VSC tool, you can create a publish an official publisher name. Remember, I just used Brad, but you can actually um, kind of register your your publisher name and then you can log in as your publisher and then you can update versions and stuff like that. All right. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, and, and I encourage you to think of ideas, whether it's just for yourself to to increase the speed of your workflow or to actually create something that you want to upload to the marketplace that you think other people can benefit from. So I want to end this by just taking a look at the source code of Simon's extension here, uh, because what we did was very, very basic. We only created one snippet, one snippets.json file. Uh, but if we take a look at his package.json and we look at down here in snippets, he actually has multiple files. So he has snippets.json, which has the, the, the basic starter template 
uh, shortcuts. And then he also has nav snippets.json for navbar stuff and form snippets.json. So you can have multiple snippet files. So if we go and we look at snippets, you'll see he has some extra files. Snippets.json has the basic BCDN. This is pretty much what we just did. And he also has the, the version without the JavaScript, which is BCSS. Okay, but if we look at, let's say, nav snippets, he has BS nav, which creates a basic nav bar. There's BS nav C if you want it centered, BS nav R if you want it, um, you know, right aligned and, and all different styles of nav bars, even drop down. Okay, so is that and also form snippets. Okay, so to create like a form group. And it's just it's very helpful. And, and obviously you could do this for every aspect of Bootstrap if you want to generate cards or something like that. And of course, Bootstrap is just an example. I mean, you could create snippets, snippet extensions for anything. Um, one extension that I use all the time is, is with React. It's this ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets. And there's just a ton of them here. So to generate React components, whether they're functional or class based, prop types, um, even like console logs and all that stuff. So these these are very come in very handy. Um, and uh, it's definitely something that you may want to think about, whether it's just for yourself and your own workflow or if you want to upload it to the to the uh, marketplace to help other people out. Maybe other people can make use of of your extension. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. That's going to be it. And I'll see you next time. So programming is all about logic with some principles of math and science and a great place to strengthen your mind and become a better overall programmer is brilliant. They have some of the most unique types of brain building courses I've ever seen, including computer science and math courses, quizzes and more. The tests and quizzes really break down the answers for you when you get them wrong and they give you a much better understanding of, of where you went wrong. And it doesn't matter which type of program you are or which language you use, Brilliant's concepts benefit everyone in the the industry by installing deep problem solving skills and critical thinking. You won't learn to memorize like many online courses teach, but you'll learn to understand and really wrap your head around all types of concepts that have to do with computer science and just logic in general. They have both free and premium accounts available, so click on the link in the description and the first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off.